In the last part of my series, I introduced the children of Israel, who escaped captivity from Egypt and followed God to the land he promised their forefathers, Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham. I explained the children of Israel were extremely important in understanding religion because it is them that introduced monotheism to the world first. The God of Israel commanded them not to partake with the other nations' gods. He made a clear split from the other tribes and nations' deities, declaring himself the one true God. So before diving back into the story, I must make it clear that I worship the God of Israel for many reasons, but definitely because of his proven power he showed to the world time and time again. I said it in part one, that Israel being so small, it would not have been able to do what they did and make such an impression in the world if their God wasn't the one true God. The next part of the story is all about him proving this to the world, and it's why I'm covering it. I could have easily moved from Moses to King David, but I believe this information is crucial to understand. I'll tell you why. While people deny Jesus and the Israelites, they cannot deny that the land that they say they occupied existed. So learning about the history of the land and its occupants reinforces the truth. So I challenge anyone in denial to cite sources of other groups that claim this entire piece of land during this time period. Second, in order for the Lord to establish his covenant in the world, he needed to make himself known. So he chose his people who were few in number and led them to conquer the land and bring other nations in fear of their God, who was different than all the others. This is part of the story you must know and is found in the book of Joshua and Judges. For those that don't know, aside from the law and prophecy, The Bible, particularly the Old Testament, is very much a history book of the nation that was in a covenant with the one true God. So let's begin. Part two of the story ended when Moses guided Israel to the promised land. Now Moses was old, at least 120 years of age, and was not able to cross into the land. Before letting Israel depart from Moses, the Lord told Moses of Israel's future rebellion. He told Moses, this people will rise up and go whoring after gods of the strangers of the land, and they will forsake me, and break my covenant which I made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in the day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have done, in that they have turned unto other gods. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 16 through 18. It's important to understand this because this is a major part of Israel's history and the Lord foretold it before it even happened. Now after Moses, Joshua was made the new leader of Israel. He was purposed with leading Israel to the land God promised them and dividing the land up amongst the tribes. Israel was a small group compared to the other nations but they were conquering all the inhabitants of the land that they were about to occupy. One of the cities was Jericho. The people of Jericho knew Israel was coming. Some of the inhabitants made a deal with Israel in order to protect their families. They told Israel that they knew the Lord had given Israel that land and that the terror of Israel had frightened the inhabitants of Jericho. They said they heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea to come out of Egypt and what they did to the Amorites. They were utterly scared of Israel because of the word that went around about the power of their God. Again, this was important because it showed how the knowledge of Israel and their God spread amongst the other nations. They were all utterly frightened. So in the story of Jericho, they were commanded to march around the city, one time, six days straight. But on the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times, and the priests will blow trumpets, and all the people will shout, and the walls of Jericho will fall down flat. And fall it did, and they overtook the city. Again, the Lord showing his power. So as they were conquering these lands, the Lord told them to abstain from these nations they conquered accursed things, or they would be cursed and bring a curse upon Israel. But of course, there was a hard-headed Israelite, and he took some of the accursed things. So he brought anger to the Lord. So when Israel sent out 3,000 men against the nation, The men of that nation struck down about 36 men of Israel's and chased the fighters of Israel out of their gates. Israel got shook up from this. Joshua had to consult with the Lord. Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? 
Oh, that we have been content and dwelt on the other side of the Jordan. O oh Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off your name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? And the Lord said, Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I've commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and both stolen and deceived. And they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Neither will I be with you any more unless you destroy the accursed from among you. O Israel, you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. So they found a man who took the accursed thing. They stoned him and burned him. I'm telling you, the Lord does not play around. That's why you want to make sure you aren't doing things that he hates. The Lord showed the fierceness of his anger, and after the transgressor was taken care of, the curse was lifted. And Joshua continued conquest of the land of Canaan and its inhabitants. You can see a summary of Joshua's conquest in Joshua chapter 11, verses 16 through 23. It speaks of the kings he conquered in chapter 12, if you want to go more in depth. Joshua took the land and divided it up according to the division of the 12 tribes. It's also important that you know that from the tribe of Joseph came two separate tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim because of Jacob's blessing in Genesis chapter 48. So the land was still divided into 12 tribes, but Joseph's tribe was split into two, and the tribe of Levi didn't get an inheritance of land. They were divided up amongst Israel as the priest, which is why the other tribes were commanded to tithe their crops and increase to them. But that's another point. So the Lord gave Israel all the land of which he swore, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them when he was with them. He delivered all their enemies into their hand. So not a word failed of any good thing the Lord had spoken to Israel. All had come to pass. The Lord again reminded Israel of his command to keep and do all that was written in the law of Moses. And there is not to be any mention of the nation's gods, nor serve them or bow down to them. And he would continue to drive out the rest of the nations and none of them would be able to stand against them. He said, one man shall chase a thousand because it's him who fights for them. But he warned them once again that if they cling to the remnant of those nations and make marriages with them, he will no longer drive those nations out from them, but they will be snares and traps for them. He said when they transgress the covenant of the Lord and served other gods, then his anger will be against them. You see, there were many warnings given to Israel, but do you think they listened? Of course not. The Lord said it would happen. Remember that. So in the last days of Joshua, Israel still did not complete their conquest of the land that God required of them. Joshua died, and the next generation did not know Joshua, and they were unfaithful to the Lord. The book of Judges tells the history of the different judges that Israel had after the death of Moses and Joshua. You see, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord God of their fathers, who had brought them out of the land of Egypt. Please note, he repeatedly said this as a reminder to Israel that he freed them out of the land of Egypt. So you should understand that this was a very important act he did. Remember that as Passover comes around and those of us who say we love him pay that day no thought, but give remembrance to Ishtar and her eggs. Um, I mean Easter, sorry. But getting back to the story, after Joshua, they followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were all around them and they bowed down to them and they provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asherah. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So he delivered them into the hands of the plunderers who despoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of the enemies all around, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them. And they were greatly distressed. So the Lord raised up judges who delivered them out of the hand of those who plundered them. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but they played the harlot with other gods and bowed down to them. They turned quickly from the way in which their fathers walked and obeying the commandments of the Lord. They didn't do them. 
And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed them and harassed them. Then when that judge was dead, they reverted and behaved more corruptly than their fathers, again following other gods, serving them and bowing down to them. They never stopped doing what they wanted to do because they had a stubborn way. The Lord was over them again. The Lord told them, I also will no longer drive out before them any of the nations which Joshua left when he died, so that through them I may test Israel whether they will keep the ways of the Lord to walk in them as their fathers kept them or not. So the Lord left those nations without driving them out immediately. The nations the Lord left to test Israel by were five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and some of the Hivites. Some of the judges of Israel were Othniel, Ehud, Gideon, Samson, and Samuel. Gideon, one of the judges, consulted with the Lord and asked him how all this distress happened to them. He wanted to know where all the miracles were his fathers told them about. He asked the Lord, Did you bring us up from Egypt, but now have forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites? Why? And the Lord told Gideon that he would save Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. So Gideon went and tore down the altar of Baal. As soon as Gideon was dead, that the children of Israel again played the harlot with the Baals and made Baal Bereth their god. Thus, the children of Israel did not remember the Lord again, and they were overtaken. They pleaded to the Lord again, and the Lord told them, Go cry out to the gods which you chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. But he could no longer endure the misery of Israel. They were his chosen people. It should also be noted that the tribe of Dan exclusively took on idols of other gods and did not remove them. Their history became a little shaky, and not to get ahead of the story and the other parts, when the northern tribes were conquered, the tribe of Dan was done away with from Israel and God's covering. So much so that if you read Revelation chapter 7, when God speaks of sealing his 144,000, 12,000 from each tribe of the tribes of Israel, it should be noted that Dan was not mentioned in these tribes. They took on considerable wickedness, so it was important to highlight. It was said that this tribe went north into what we now know as Europe today. But the main points to walk away with from this part three is that one, in conquering their land, God was with Israel and fought their battles. He did this so much of the other nations were desperately frightened by the smaller nation of Israel. Number two, Joshua led Israel in righteousness and following him, they were able to get the land of their inheritance, which Joshua divided according to the law of Moses. Three, once Joshua died, they disregarded the covenant of their fathers and worshiped Baal over and over. 4. God sent judges to free them from their enemies' hands. They listened for a while and then went right back with their wickedness. Number 5. They continuously did this and the Lord left some of their enemies around them. Number 6. The Lord showed his power to the rest of the world by bringing Israel into their land upon conquering the other inhabitants. Number 7. Israel continuously disobeyed him, served other gods, and brought about distress and dominion by other groups. All this is important to know when trying to understand Israel completely. This history is not normally discussed, but you must understand Israel and you also must understand the Lord. He does not just lay silent in our wickedness and there are things he hates. He does not just turn a blind eye when we convene with other gods and their traditions. Make sure all that you do in his name actually comes from him. Many of us say God knows our heart. But that should make us all worried when our heart leads us to worship him against his ways and desires for us. The God of Israel is very powerful and worthy to be praised. So understand him through Israel's successes and failures. In the next part, Israel pleads to be like the rest of the other nations. This being exactly against what God told them he desired for them. The next part will again show their glory and their fall from it. If you're not subscribed, please make sure you do that now so that you're notified when part four comes. Please share this series with anyone with questions about religion and the Bible. My goal is to answer them all and bring back a desire to read God's word. I hope this blesses you. I love you all.